whenever I hear someone say, I am beautiful just the way that I am, or people should love me just the way I am, I think to myself, who the hell are you? I'm out here racking my brain, trying to figure out how I'm supposed to improve each day, and here you are saying, you don't need to put in any effort. What makes you so damn special? You were born with a unique genetic code, I'll give you that. But that's not all you are, you're also a personality and a consciousness. But none of these things are necessarily original. I mean, I'm pretty sure you look somewhat like your relatives and your relatives look somewhat like you. As well as the behaviors that you perpetuate are somewhat similar to those of whom you admire. And consciousness, I just have a little faith that everyone has that or else it's kind of a lonely existence. So by what metric are you then special? Is it because you, like everyone else, have a 1 in 400 trillion chance of actually being born? As I said a second ago, everyone else has the same chance, so that takes away from its uniqueness. It takes away from its specialness. Now, unless you were born with some divine purpose that only you can fulfill, I would argue there is nothing that makes you special. Even the purposes, the meaning that people have taken on, I'm pretty sure most of them have been tried and tested for by someone. So I ask again, what makes you so damn special? After watching Blade Runner, I tried to figure out what the hell it meant because hell was it depressing. For context, our protagonist Kay, later named Joe, goes to investigate something. He finds some information that makes him believe he is significant, he is special in some sense, some external sense. He then finds out later on in the film that that's a lie and is told to execute someone. He decides to disobey that order and instead become someone valuable in someone else's journey, which he chose himself. And what I understood from that particular aspect is that having a value of yourself placed in an external place is incredibly dangerous because for all intents and purposes, it's an illusion. At any point, that value, that sense of specialness can be stripped away from you, and then you could just be an average dude. And seeing as though it is so volatile, I don't think this type of specialness is necessarily real. So I ask again, if it is not someone's external value of you that makes you significant, unique, special, whatever, then what is it? Narcissism is the belief that you are the man, or more technically, that you have an excessive admiration of yourself. I believe that admiration for oneself at any point is overly excessive. I believe that admiration should only be reserved for perfection itself. And trust me, we ain't it. As far as I can tell, there's always some means by which we can improve. I believe to say that you like something about yourself at any point is the same as saying it is good enough. Meaning you do not necessarily have to work on it anymore. Now I believe that it is okay to look at your past self and see how far you've progressed and think, damn, I've come far. But to say that you like that aspect of yourself is to say that it is good enough, as I've said before. So it's within that satisfaction that you get complacent, that you feel as though the work is done, and you cease progressing to the true ideal. Now this of course begs the question, is there ever enough? Or is there ever an end point?
to answer as plainly as I can, I think there can be. Now, I say can be instead of is, because that relies on your personal values. To an extent, it does contradict what I said in the previous part, but to bridge the two ideas, I just believe that an end point should never be based on satisfaction. I believe it should be the accepting of true limitation, which is to show humility. Now, technically, a lot of limitations can be broken and you have the option to keep going. So what I am referring to is a self-imposed limitation you have for yourself or an actual physical limitation. I don't believe this is accepting defeat as long as you are pursuing something of equal or greater value in its stead. It's the moment you stop that you're accepting defeat. So there can be an endpoint under the premise that either it is a genuine limitation or you are pursuing something greater. Make sure that you're not lying to yourself on this front because you know when you are. And it will eat away at your soul little bit by little bit because you know what you can be and you refuse to go further. Most people's sense of self-worth is often unjustified. You are not perfect, and hence you should have the ability to admit as such. Or you are very likely to end up being stagnant and to an extent narcissistic. The true ideal that you have is always going to require work. No matter what level you are, there's always something higher than yourself that you can try to achieve. And as I've said before, to have something to achieve and work towards it is the where you find your sense of meaning. So why give up now? So if you're humble, you'll see where you're lacking. And then you'll know that you can go further. So stay humble, my friends. And you will find great value will come out of it.